Uh, Moro, I could talk Japanese press with you for hours, but I need to sneak in a few MMA questions or else I'm going to get fired. So let me, oh, let me no toss worries, you your way right now. Uh, obviously, big hot topic right now, John's Bones Jones testing positive for cocaine use. Uh, do you have any thoughts on, on this and uh, what disciplinary, well, disciplinary actions uh, the UFC should take on him, if any? Well, it's devastating. It's shocking. And it's obviously not a, a great way to kick off the uh, year in MMA. You know, in MMA, a sport, again, that I've been in, involved in for over a decade. I, I love mixed martial arts. I love the, the accents of martial arts. I love the history, uh, the, the, the war. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a, a local, uh, you know, regional show or, or prime fighting championships or the UFC. I, I've covered it at every level. I've called matches at every level, and every time I... I, I start commentating a, a match, you know, I, I realize just how incredible these people are that are putting their lives on the line and, and, and showcasing their skills and, and to see one of the best ever. And the guy, again, at 27, the youngest UFC champion in history, a man who already pound for pound, is the best coming off, uh, 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 you know, uh, the win in, in one of the most anticipated title fights. I said to people before the matchup, just due to the build and the, the credentials of uh, Cormier, and uh, Jones, that I was as stoked as I was when uh, Fedor fought Prokop in Pride in August 2005 in the most anticipated heavyweight title fight uh, of its era. Uh, now, in the wake of it, I, I, you know, we hear stories like everybody else. You know, John Jones has had a, a, a history of, of making these kinds of mistakes. We all know about the family being wrapped around the, the telephone pole with two girls, neither of which were his fiance. Uh, we've had the, you know, the DUI coming out of that. Uh, uh, other issues as. Anyone who has maybe been a young man, of which you and I both have been, you probably uh, a lot uh, more recent than myself, we all make mistakes, we all do idiotic things, but he is uh, a guy with plenty of responsibilities, as the old saying goes, you know, with plenty of power comes plenty of responsibility. He has uh, brands to worry about, he's, you know, signed by Reebok, he is the, the poster boy, he is the UFC light heavyweight champion, and and for him to test positive for metabolites, uh, you know, in cocaine, uh, which don't even get me started on what the commission and, and how the UFC has handled this, because frankly, uh, I'm, I'm very confused and, and very frustrated. And I've had uh, conversations in the past with the NSAC about how they deal with certain things. And, and, and you know, when you, when you follow the, the WADA code, where out of competition drug testing, uh, you know, they don't test for recreational drugs like cocaine. Or, or marijuana. So the fact that now the commission is saying it was an anomaly or an administrative oversight, like there, there's, there's got to be help to pay here in many ways. And, and while uh, the UFC's code of conduct covers, uh, you know, substance abuse and, and all this, uh, you know, stuff that's detrimental to the PR for the company and the reputation of the company, uh, I know a lot of people are frustrated in that, you know, Jay, uh, Dana White, when, when John Jones pulled out of uh, UFC uh, 152, I believe it was, uh, when he, you know, didn't want to fight the Chael Sonnen on short notice, you know, Dana White railed against him, and now here he tests positive for cocaine, and he comes out in firmly in support of him, and, and so I, I, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not one to judge. I have my own skeletons. We all have had uh, our own issues in life, but because of the, the 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 profile and because of who he is, I wish him best. I hope that he is able to conquer these demons, but there does have to be some repercussion, regardless of what the rules are going in. I mean, uh, why, if the, the, the commission and the UFC had to have known December 4th or shortly after when he was tested, the results came out. And, and you you know, there are many conspiracy theories, and some of them, uh, I understand why there are, because this past Saturday's pay-per-view, one of the biggest pay-per-views in a long time for the UFC, uh, a company that's been, you know, struggling to, to, to get these big buy rates because of the, the fact they're running a lot more shows. And, and at the end of the day, going back to pro wrestling, Combat sports is a star-driven business. It's all about the stars, individuals. And, and John Jones, one of the biggest. And now he's going in rehab. And, and a guy who already was a very polarizing personality. And in fact, following the fight on Saturday, I applauded him via Twitter saying, Hey, John, congratulations. I, I love this version of John Jones and raising the hate. Because uh, to me, that seemed like the most comfortable John Jones. And so now uh, I wonder what, what the future holds and, and whether this is going to be you know all but forgotten soon enough and... And we continue because it does, uh, there, there seems to be some double standards. When you look at the, the marijuana test, when you look at people who have been fired for a far less egregious uh, situations in terms of what we're dealing with there now. But when you look at it from the, the way it is right now, it was an out-of-competition drug test. Out-of-competition is 12 hours uh, before um, or 12 days before.
before the uh, the fight, I believe, and hours after the fight. And so it's a mess. That's all I can say about it. I, I get frustrated even talking about it because I, I really do love and care deeply about mixed martial arts. But boy, does this sport do a good job of uh, shooting itself in the foot. And, and when it comes to performance enhancing drugs or drug issues of any type, uh, it needs to be eradicated and the commissions need to be overhauled. And, and everyone's got to be on the same page or, or, or what's the point, really? This is, uh, it's not good. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more now. Uh, unfortunately, we are running short on time. So before we go, Mr. Ronaldo, I got a game I want to play with you that I think you're going to like. Uh, I've got a list of hypothetical dream matches of pro wrestlers. And so I'd like you to tell me who would win these matches, considering they were in their prime. Who, who would be the winner? So let me run these at you. I got on one side, Legion of Doom taking on the Dudley Boys. Who would win that matchup? Uh, I think it would be a double count out in one of the wildest brawls <laughs> in professional wrestling history and probably feature uh, Bubba Ray Dudley uh, going through uh, a, a couple of tables from uh, maybe the, the, the highest point of uh, uh, the Empire State Building. How does that sound? That sounds painful. That sounds really painful. <laughs> No, I, I, I think that would be a that would be a very entertaining, crowd pleasing, a uh, double count out in a wild brawl. Yes. Now let's go on the on the opposite spectrum of that side. Let's say Prince Devitt or Finn Balor, whatever you want to call him, taking on Dynamite Kid in his prime. Who takes that one? Fantastic match. I wish I could see it. Uh, I would have to go. Uh, I, again, you know, get to their teens and twenties. Now we'll say Finn Balor. I'm sure. I, I you know. That and my kid was one of my favorites uh, growing up, and again, a guy who revolutionized the business. Uh, I think it would be a, a fantastic match, a learning experience for uh, Prince Devitt, but uh, uh, Dynamite Kid would, uh, would, would pick up the win with that diving headbutt. All right, and how about... Of which, obviously, now we are learning more and more, uh, you know, not the best uh, for, for anyone to do with the, all of the issues about concussions and, and head trauma, but uh, that's how I see that one ending. Yeah, very true, very good point. Uh, all right, how about this one? I got the Battle of the Kings, Harley Race versus Triple H. Who wins that one? Hmm, man, I know that uh, Triple H has taken the running knee lift from Harley, and uh, Harley, one of the you know legitimate tough guys, the street fighters, a guy who added a lot of prestige to the NWA title. Triple H, I, I, I think at times, uh, you know, Triple H is. I, I thought there was a, a run where he was a very good worker, and at other times maybe. Uh, you know, I don't want to say lazy, but but didn't always deliver the way he could. Um, if it's booked under WWE, well, we know how that's going to go. But if it was on neutral ground, um, I would uh, I would look for uh, Harley Race to to sneak out the the win, the 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 veteran teaching the youngster. All right, now uh, one last one. Let's call this one the hypothetical championship title match of the universe. Uh, Ric Flair taking on Mitsuhara Misawa. Um, I would say Ric Flair with a reversal. The figure four leg lock gets reversed. He's going, he's street, he, he, uh, he, he reaches the bottom rope, selling like only Ric Flair can sell, gets the break. It's, it's, the knee is, you know, the knee, he's, he's selling the knee, he's screaming at the referee, he's in pain, in pain. Uh, Miss Allen comes over and you got yourself a side cradle, small package, surprise, one, two, three, and then the arrogant Ric Flair takes the microphone and goes into his best version of the, you know, kiss stealing, wheeling, dealing, limousine flying, jet riding, son of a gun. Woo. And the crazy part is I could actually see him really doing that if that match was ever booked, and unfortunately it won't be, but <laughs> I could totally see that happening. That's, that's the perfect that's finish. Simple. Was that not the most understated impression of Ric Flair you have ever heard in your life? I've heard understated further, but that, that's pretty good. That's pretty understated. <laughs> Far be it from Laura Vernalo to be understated, but there you go. This is a first. This is uh, We should tell the Guinness books about this one. That's a record breaker right there. That's right. That's right. All right, well, Mr. Vernalo, like I said, I could do this for hours. Man, it's all passion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we could do this for hours. We should definitely do this again sometime. Um, New Japan Pro Wrestling Show premiering on Access TV January 16th. Tune in, check it out, listen to Moro and Josh Burnett talk at New Japan. It's amazing. Definitely worth checking out. You guys are doing a great job. I look forward to more episodes. And, uh, yeah, we, like I said, we got to do this again sometime, Mr. Ronaldo. Oh, I appreciate uh, the interest and the great questions. And, uh, yeah, I love talking uh, about combat sports, especially 
you know, the history and that. And that's why, too, and I apologize, maybe I wasn't as articulate or clear as I, I, I could be on the John Jones matter. It's just that I'm uh, as someone who, you know, makes my living in this business and, 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 and really respecting these, these performers and these athletes. It's, it's so it's so depressing, I guess is the word that, you know, this the, the MMA news, the headlines uh, the last year, you know, of all about injuries or drug tests and, there's so much to celebrate when, when you look at just what, you know, these people are capable of. And I hope as we move forward that the powers that be are going to do whatever is necessary to do. And if it takes spending money, then spend the money you need to clean up the sport. And whether it's, it's uh, you know, through, through working with, with organizations, maybe like Avada or, or, or whatever, there, there has to be a change. And I'm talking across the, the gamut of combat sports, boxing, MMA, uh, you name it. Uh, we need to clean up the sport. There needs to be zero tolerance for performance-enhancing drugs. And, and I just hope John Jones, uh, again, because there remains so many questions, I just hope he finds the peace of mind that he needs because he's a father uh, first to his kids. Uh, I know he's, he's got a fiancé, so he, he, he has responsibilities to his own family and to himself. And, and uh, you know, fighting has to be on the back burner right now, and, and that's what it should be. If he, if he does have the issues that it seems to be he does with, with drugs. Uh, you know, people think maybe he uh, may have uh, checked in as a PR move. I, I, again, the cynic in me says, yeah, maybe so, but I want to give the guy the benefit of the doubt. Well, I think we can say 2015, no matter what, not just for John Jones, but for the entire MMA spectrum, it's going to be a year of major change and transition, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting year, that's for sure. Yeah, I hope it's, uh, I hope it's uh, at the end of the year about what happened inside the cage instead of what's happened outside. But uh, all the best for the New Year to you and uh, your listeners, and I hope you'll join Josh Barnett and I beginning Friday, January 16th, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Pacific on Access TV as we bring you, uh, again, uh, yes, this is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, the best professional wrestling on the planet, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Can't wait. All right, Mr. Ronaldo, thank you very much. Appreciate the time today. Thank you, sir.